This month, we're going to introduce you to a group that started out as a task force brought together to revitalize Williamson County's animal control program, then share a milestone that was recently reached by the center as a result of a program started only two years ago. Hello, Williamson County. I'm Scott Pieper, Community Outreach Coordinator and host of Inside the Animal Center. Thank you for joining us for the first episode of our new monthly series that will bring you news and stories from the Williamson County Animal Center. Our goal with this program is to give you an insider's look into how we're making Williamson County better for our four-legged and two-legged community members, one animal at a time. If there's a story you want to hear, I'd love for you to share your idea by emailing it to me. Before we get to the feature segments each month, we're going to let you know some of what has been going on and what we're looking forward to at the center. For instance, did you know that the Animal Center receives approximately 4,000 animals each year? And 2021 is on pace to hit that mark again. Through September, the center has received almost 3,200 animals. The Animal Center's live release rate is 96.6% so far in 2021, which means the vast majority of our animals received are either adopted out, transferred to another welfare organization, found as a stray and returned to their owner, or they came in to be spayed or neutered and were returned. A couple of very special adoptions took place in September, as Jinxie, a senior cat who originally came to us in November of last year, found her forever home, and Bruno, a favorite among the dog volunteers, found his human family after being with us since March. It's always bittersweet to say goodbye, but we couldn't be happier to help Jinxie, Bruno, and all our adopted pets live happy, healthy lives with their new families. During the month of October, Friends of Williamson County Animal Center, more on them in just a bit, is sponsoring a month-long event that we're calling Pawktober for the love of pets. Using an award they received from the ASPCA and Subaru Loves Pets grant program, the Friends Group is offering free rabies vaccinations and microchipping on specific dates in October. They are also giving away leashes, collars, and name tags to all adopters while supplies last. And 25 approved adopters will be selected by random drawing to have their adoption fees paid for by the grant. Rabies vaccinations are required by the state of Tennessee and are available at no cost from October 26th through October 30th, and you should call ahead to make arrangements. You can have your pet microchipped for free from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Monday through Friday each week in October. Strays that come to the center having a microchip are more than twice as likely to be returned to their owner as those that do not. Visit the Animal Center's website Follow us on social media or call the Animal Center for more details. On October 15th and the third Friday of each month, Friends also sponsors Paw Pantry at the Animal Center. This program provides free pet food to Williamson County residents who could use a little help keeping their fur baby bellies full. Proof of residency is required and November's food giveaway will take place on the 19th. Mars Pet Care will sponsor their annual adoption weekend on October 22nd and 23rd at the Animal Center. All approved adopters will have their fees waived on that Friday and Saturday and receive a gift bag filled with food, treats, and toys to help the pet feel at home with their new family. Lastly, we are looking forward to seeing everyone on October 30th at Pumpkin Fest in downtown Franklin, hosted by the Heritage Foundation of Williamson County. To stay up to date with all that is happening at the center, be sure to follow us on social media. Today, Williamson County Animal Center has spay and neuter neutering programs and services for just about every situation you can think of, but that hasn't always been the case. And today, joining us is Samantha Anderson, who is the reason that these <laughs> programs and services are in place at the center today. Hi, Sam. Hi. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> well, 
Thank you for having me. And I can't say it's not all me. I don't actually do the spaying and neutering. So it's a whole team of us. Of course, of course. But these are programs that launched under your guidance, correctly? Yeah, most okay. of them. <laughs> okay, okay. The CAT programs, yes. <laughs> right, right. So what was it uh, that led you to starting the community CAT programs? Well, I was a kennel tech when it was becoming a new program, um, and it, it was, um, I think, in the making for a while, um, and then Andrea you know, asked me to come on, and the big reason that it was started was because over the years, the population of cats in the county and in the shelter was growing too fast. Um, we were constantly over capacity for our animals, and when we're over capacity, that means not as great of care as we'd like it to be for each animal. Um, so we knew that something had to change and um, our programs have been done in other parts of the country and have been successful, so we wanted to do it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've shared numbers with me in the past that uh, are quite amazing. I know you, you've told me before that a single female cat left unspayed can be responsible for as many as 420,000 cats, her and her offspring, uh, within seven years. Yeah, yeah, and quite a few. And a lot, of, um, a lot of people don't know that uh, cats can reach sexual maturity at four and a half months old when they're still babies. So a lot of people, um, for the benefit of the cat, want to wait until they're six months or a year old thinking that's what's best for them. Uh, but really, we want to get them in um, by five months old um, so that we can get them in before they have their first litter of kittens and have to go through that cycle. But um, every time a cat gives birth, they can give birth to two to eight kittens, and they can give wow. birth about three times a year. So um, it's a, a year-round thing. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So what are some of the programs that um, are available for spade and neutering? Yeah, so... Um, for any cat that you have, we have a program. Um, so firstly, if you have feral cats or cats that are not handleable, maybe you can feed them, maybe every once in a while you can pet them, but you would never pick them up um, or you know try to mess with them, um, we do have trap, neuter, return. Um, we do have volunteers that can assist people in the actual trapping. Um, we bring them to the shelter for free spay and neuter services, and then they go back to the property to be with their caretakers. Um, for the more friendly cats that spend time outdoors or live outdoors, mm -hmm. maybe it's not necessarily your cat, but you feed it. Maybe it is your cat that just lives outside. Um, we have our free outdoor cat spay and neuter program. Um, and then lastly, we have a new program in 2021, which is our kitten rescue mm -hmm. and rehome program. So basically what that is, is uh, during this time, a lot of people have a mom that gives birth on their property or they find a litter of kittens. And a lot of people want to rehome them on their own or keep them because mm -hmm. they've really grown attached to them. It's really easy to do with kittens. So if people want to do that, we'll offer free services to them if the kittens are 16 weeks and under, including spay and neuter, um, so that they can rehome them to a family of their choice that they feel comfortable with. Right. Well, that's certainly understandable. Who wouldn't want to find a kitten and, yeah. and hold on to them? Right, yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to let them go. <laughs> right, right. Uh, who is eligible for the programs? Now, any Williamson County resident is eligible for the program, and um, for two out of the three programs I mentioned, as long as they spend time outdoors, we will fix them for you. And for the kittens, they just have to be uh, 16 weeks or younger to qualify for the kitten rescue and rehome program. Mm -hmm. and, and how does somebody sign up? So you can go on our website, adoptwcac.org, and under the resources tab is where you'll find um, all of our spay and neuter programs. Um, so even if you would like to get a dog fixed, we've got a program there you can look at and fill out an application. Um, and um, the applications for the outdoor cat spay and neuter and the kitten rescue and rehome. Well, thank you. And certainly it is a team effort at the Animal Center, um, but there's no denying that you have played a huge role <laughs> in a recent milestone that we've achieved un under, uh, through these programs under your guidance. And uh, would you like to share what that milestone is? Sure. So uh, about June of 2021, 
um, we hit 3,000 spays and neuters for outdoor cats. So that includes feral cats, friendly cats that spend time outdoors, and the kitten rescue and rehome program. So um, we're preventing a lot of unwanted litters of kittens that would probably end up at the shelter um, anyway. So um, we're really happy that we can start to make a dent in this overpopulation problem. Absolutely, absolutely. And given the numbers that we talked about earlier, who knows how many other cats would be living outside if those 3,000 cats and kittens hadn't been spayed. So. Right, and we do approximate that there is approximately 30,000 cats that live outdoors in Williamson County. Um, so we know that we're inching closer and closer, but we still have a lot of work to do. So if you're feeding a cat, you know someone that's feeding a cat, and they live in Williamson County, we would be happy to assist them with spay or neuter. Yeah. Well, that seems like a great way to wrap things up, Sam. Thank you so much thank for you. joining me today and for uh, all the work you're doing yeah. at the Animal Center. Well, thank you. I'm here with Ann Logan, board chair for Friends of Williamson County Animal Center. Ann has always had a passion for animal advocacy, and she was once the, a charter member for a nonprofit that uh, was formed to build an animal shelter. And then she helped with fundraising and served as co-chair for the foster and adoption programs for that organization. And in 1986, she founded People for Animals, a nonprofit offering spay and neutering assistance, uh, which uh, my understanding is that to this day, you still serve as president for, yes. for uh, People for Animals. Uh, and then later, you joined a Williamson County Animal Control Task Force, which evolved into the Friends Group, the Friends of Williamson County Animal Center. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, Anne. And th that is just a portion of the things I could have read about you from your biography. Uh, you have done so much uh, in the animal welfare world and, and other um, ventures as well. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Oh, you're very welcome. This is, this is my passion for sure. Animal working for, on behalf of animals is, is what I do. Yeah, and you are doing it very well. So thank you, thank you. Um, so I touched on a little bit uh, the origins of the Friends of Williamson County Animal Center. That started a, out as a task force. Uh, do you mind sharing a little bit about what that was? Sure, I would love to because I, I, um, I always love giving kudos to Mayor Anderson for his um, advocacy and leadership on behalf of the this program. So um, he is the one who called together the task force and charged us to dream big. There were just no limits to what he wanted us to, to think of that wow. could, could be um, implemented in that program. So we did that for two years, and then at the end of that time, the task force was, has, had served its purpose. But we didn't want to just walk away and do nothing, so we decided we would um, evolve into a nonprofit that could fundraise for one thing, so mm -hmm. provide funding that would help the, the program and the animals of Williamson County. So that is how Friends came to be. That is amazing. Uh, it, you touched on the, the fundraising part of it. What are some of the other things that Friends does, uh, how they support the Animal Center? Well, we, we serve as, as advocates, as educators, we hope. We have programs um, in the community like a, um, a pet food bank, and, and we also have a paw pantry program where we get pet food and then provide it to those in the public who need that kind of support for their animals in the hope that their animals then will be um, healthier and will, will not be a financial burden. And so they'll stay in their homes right. instead of being surrendered to the shelter. So that's really the mission of, of Paw Pantry and our pet food bank. We also support the community spay neuter clinic financially. So that is ultimately a, a financial uh, thing that we do. Um, we also support the TNR program that the shelter 
operate. So we can we provide funding sometimes for programs that the shelter has that are implemented for community animals as well as for things that we do for animals in the shelter. So we're very much concerned about the animals in the community and what the quality of life they have is as well as shelter animals because obviously animals in the shelter came from the community. Exactly. So it behooves us all to be very conscious of working on behalf of supporting animals in the community so that they can stay in their, in their homes. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we all know that uh, as much that we do for the animals in our care, um, to your point, it's as important to keep animals from coming to the shelter as much as anything. So. I know the Friends group is very active, as you were saying. Um, and if somebody wanted to uh, join Friends, get involved with Friends, uh, how, could, how could someone show their support or get involved? Well, they can go to our website, which is friendsofwcac.org, and there's a, a place there that they can send um, information to us that indicates they're interested in, in being involved. Our particular needs are additional support, and this involves expertise, admittedly, for our website, which is, is a very demanding kind of thing to get it up and keep it fresh and you know and managed so we do need more help there we need we need some additional help with social media and and with small events like where you have a booth out in the community we need people who would be willing to be called upon to come with us to a a location in the community where we would be there to talk to people sometimes we're selling t-shirts but we're also educating and letting people know what the program does and how they can support us and and the shelter. So we would we would love to have some some additional volunteers if people in the community want to get involved. If they contact us, we can talk more with them about their particular um, interest and what we have uh, needs for. All right, all right. And if for someone who may not quite understand what the difference between Friends of Williamson County Animal Center and volunteering or uh, supporting the Animal Center itself directly. Uh, what is, can you kind of explain what that difference is? Well, the, the shelter, Williamson County Animal Center, and I hope everybody will start learning that new name because I, I see it being called all kinds of things, but it's <laughs> Williamson County Animal Center. That is primarily funded by the county right. and to a smaller degree cities within the county. Um, so it's a tax funded program and it is, it is run by the county. Um, Friends is not in any way um, in charge of anything at the shelter. We are a separate nonprofit. So they're two totally separate entities, but who are very closely aligned um, in philosophy and what we are trying to accomplish for animals in our county. So Friends is there to support where county tax dollars may leave off. That can be um, extraordinary medical expenses for animals that just go above and beyond what the county tax dollars could reasonably provide for one animal. But Friends is a nonprofit, so we raise money, we accept donations, and we're able to say we can provide that medical care or that behavioral care for a given animal in the shelter so that it can become adoptable, whereas otherwise it would not be able to be adopted. So we are very much just a support entity for the county's tax-funded program. Our county is very generous with our, with our animal center, um, and we recognize that and very much appreciate it, but there's always gonna be a limit to right. what tax dollars can do. So that's where Friends comes in. Yeah, absolutely, and come in very strong. I cannot tell you, Anne, how much we appreciate your support and the support of the Friends group. Um, and I 
looking forward to continuing to work together in the future. And thank you again for being here with me today. And thank you, Williamson County, for watching Inside the Animal Center.